Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. It's week three of the month in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group and that means our prompt is Let's Get Arty. So I am taking this Alizarin Crimson Transparent Paint by Pabio and I'm just going to spread a thin layer of this on the gel plate. Now you would see there's still some uh, lines and pattern down from when I last used a gel plate and that's fine. I'm quite happy if what I do today lifts that up because what I'm really doing today is making some background papers for the piece of art that I want to create. I left myself a little minute there in between and now I'm just testing to see if it's dry. It wasn't. I'd stuck my thumb in it so I just decided to do that in two or three places. So these are stencils or, or more properly masks from PM Artist Studio. I did a video showing these previously and I'll leave a link to that above and below. So I'm now taking this Naples yellow paint, also by Pabio, albeit this is an opaque paint, and I'm going to go over the top of the masks. Now you see they're moving, I had been hoping that they were going to stick, but uh, yeah, they moved when I tried to brayer them. So I'll just take out a palette knife and spread the paint that way. Now because these are for background papers, I'm not caring really about any imperfections in them at all uh, because as you'll see later I don't leave them exactly as is anyway and in fact them turning up with imperfections is better because if they turned out too nice the papers then I'd think oh I don't know if I want to use them. You know the thing about the gel plate is you don't always know what you're going to get but today what I did know was roughly the kind of colour combos I wanted to use just to start for my base papers. So just taking it out bit by bit here, spreading the paint out. In a moment I'll take the brayer over it again just to try and make sure that I've got everywhere. With these kind of stencils or masks where the detail on them is quite fine, then actually sometimes applying the paint with a palette knife is better anyway because it gets into all those little nooks and crannies. So there we go, I'm just taking that over. And in a moment I'm just going to take out a couple of pieces of the carnival tissue paper. I think these were kind of scraps I'd had left over from a bigger piece and I'm just going to pick some of this up. I just wanted to pick some of this colour up at that point. And that really looks quite nice, just that Naples yellow on the transparent tissue paper. Now just removing the masks and all I'm going to do now is to take another bit of tissue paper. You can see where the paint had blobbed there but that's not a problem at all. So just taking this other piece and I'm just going to put this down. And what I do is I leave that to the side for a few minutes. I'm not sure if it's going to pick everything up or not. That's part of the just not knowing what's going to happen. So I'll leave it a few minutes and have a cup of tea. So here I go, I'm pulling it. I'm not getting everything and that's okay because I like to get two or three pulls from the one plate. But loving the way that the Elizabeth Crimson has come out. Just getting tiny bits of the Naples yellow because of course I'd lifted a lot of that before. Now taking this Quinacridin Nickel Azo Gold by Golden. It's a fluid acrylic and just putting that across the top. I add a little bit more on in just a moment and again I will take a piece of tissue paper. It's carnival tissue paper, it's wet strength. I'll leave the link below, not sponsored or anything. Uh, this is just my tissue paper of choice. But obviously, you know, you can buy or you can use gift tissue paper. It's just this is a bit stronger and for me anyway it's great for uh, pulling monoprints. 
So again, I just leave that to the side for a moment. So here I've got a piece of cartridge paper. It's not particularly heavy weight, but it's uh, around about 11 and a half inches square and it's roughly 29 centimetres square. So as I say, it's not terribly thick paper. I could have used any paper at all, but since I was going to be putting layers on it, then I knew it would thicken up a bit. I'll just check in there to see if there's anything left on the brayer, but it's all absorbed. So just using that to really get that tissue paper down and to get a good bond with the the gel plate. Now I'm trying to keep in as much of my process as much of my process as possible, but I have put this on at double speed. So pulled that one and I absolutely love that one. I love the colours, exactly what I was looking for. So I now have three different papers that I've pulled really off the same plate uh, or at the same point more or less that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use this Windsor Newton gel matte medium to glue these down. Today, what I'm about kind of demonstrating is adding layers and textures to a painting. So this paper tears easily in one direction, but not in the other I've noticed. But what I'm going to do is I'll be tearing each sheet into smaller pieces and then gluing them down so that original pool will not remain intact, they'll all be split. So I'm going to leave you for just a moment or two while I do this, while I do the gluing, and then I'll be back. So I'm now drying it a bit, first on the front and then on the back. I just always think that gets it uh, the heat through on both sides. Then I just trim off the excess. So I'm now going to add another layer and some texture by using this Dale Rowney uh, white gesso. And as well as adding a layer and texture, what this will also do is to knock back the colours in this, because although I wanted some of these colours to be in the base, I don't want them quite as bright. So I'm just using my brayer again, and again this will add a bit of texture, using the palette knife to scrape some on, and just moving that about with it. So looking for an, an even layer here, 
but just kind of building that up in different places. And you'll see in a moment, I also use the palette knife just to kind of score into the texture, uh, sorry, into the uh, gesso. And again, that just helps create more texture. Now this could have been done with simply some acrylic paint, perhaps watered down a little bit, just so it didn't go on too thick. And you see here I'm actually using the other palette knife just to get it a little bit thicker in places. I like the effect that this creates and it's a kind of technique that I use in a lot of my paintings. So just working that in here and there trying to make sure that it's very uneven across the page. And there we go, just using that just to put in some, some little lines here and there. Because what I do later uh, will be picked up and it, those lines will be seen better. Using a bit of paper towel here, just smoothing it in a little bit in one or two places. So I want to find centre point here, don't have a long enough ruler, so I'm just roughly trying to see corner to corner, and you'll see that I mark that there. Didn't show up terribly well because I think I put the pencil into some wet gesso. It doesn't matter if it's exactly spot on, but just try my best to, to do that. And then I do the exact same on the other side and then that way I'll get the centre point. Once that's done, I am going to take a set of compasses and I'm going to draw a circle. Now, you don't need compasses to do this, you can just draw round a plate. I often just draw round a plate, but I have these, so I may as well use them. I don't bother rubbing out the lines uh, because they're all going to get covered up anyway including that one in the centre. So, a bit of kind of serendipity today, I think, because I had ordered some stencils from PM Artist Studio for other projects that I have coming up. And they very kindly included some extras. Uh, in fact, overwhelming what they included, so thanks very much to them. So, included was some imperfectly perfects or perfectly imperfects including this dragonfly and it just seemed perfect for what I wanted to do today. I, I originally had in mind uh, a different mask to use in the centre here but when this arrived this morning I just thought this is just perfect for this. So as I say I hadn't expected the package to arrive quite yet. I thought it'd be another few days away at least, but uh, yeah, so great timing. So I am using some PBO texture paste. I think it's called, or it has white sand in it, it says. Last time I used this, it took ages to dry and I was a little bit concerned that I wouldn't get it dry today. However, I think it was just because last time I used it, it was still the winter and uh, clearly my studio was quite cool. So what I'm doing with this, and I wasn't sure how well this would work because, you know, it's quite fine detail in the mask that I'm using. But what I wanted to do was to try and pick up the detail of the dragonfly, but I wanted to ex extend the texture paste beyond the dragonfly. So it looks as if the dragonfly is almost embedded within the sand, embedded within a stone. So what I was trying to do was to try and make this look as if it was almost like a fossil. So, you know, the imprint of the dragonfly embedded in stone. So I wasn't sure if the textured gel would be too thick. Just used the... Uh, the all to lift it out and I'm really pleased with the way that it's looking. Now as soon as I've done that I took the stencil off and washed it. So what I'm now doing is 
starting to see if this would dry a bit just using the heat tool. Now what I've done is I've pulled out the various Make Your Mark collage pieces I've been making over the last few weeks and what I want to do, and I'll leave links to the playlist of those videos, and what I want to do is to take a number of pieces and what I'm going to do is to use these to make a circle around my dragonfly fossil. So I'm just tearing pieces up. I want them to be quite small and I'm just going to go through all of these, tearing small pieces up and just laying them next to each other. Now at this stage I'm not gluing them down, I just want to get an idea for how they will look. And what I will do after this is to use the gel matte medium again to glue them into place. So again, I'm going to let you see as much of the process as possible. I will cut some of it out because it is a bit repetitive, but I'll let you see it. I'll put it on faster again and we'll leave you with a little bit of music. As I say, I just want you to see as much of the, the kind of process as possible. You'll see there that I have some colours that actually mar match some of the original colours in the background. So I thought that was quite good to do that. Right, be back in a minute or two. So the texture gel dried way quicker than I expected, but again what I'm doing is giving everything a dry on both sides. So at this point I knew I wanted to add another layer of colour. I was thinking initially about acrylic inks, then I was thinking about fluid acrylics. I also have the sepia calligraphy ink and I thought I wonder if that's the colour that I want. So I thought I'll just try a little bit of it, I'll put a little dab in each corner, then I, I I guess the reason I put it into each corner was that it would look even if nothing else. If I didn't like it, it would at least look even. I'm going to add some water to it, then just take a paint brush and just start to kind of spread it out a little bit. I let it run to begin with, but then just decide to use the brush just to spread it out. 
Now you see as I go on that I don't mind the colour going over the collage elements uh, because what this will do anyway is it helps all the collage elements kind of come together as as one piece. So I blend that out and I'm thinking, mm, well, okay, I could put it on thicker, it would be darker, but it just so happens that sitting in the same box was this. So it's colour art primary elements. I only have these in two different colours. This one I think is called Autumn Something. I'll double check the name and I'll, I'll put put it in the link below. Uh, yeah, I just can't remember. Autumn. Yeah, I'll definitely put the link below. And you'll see that you add water to it. It's like a kind of powder and it's got these beautiful greens and golds to it. The colours all mix together when you add a su sufficient amount of water. And when I put this on, I just thought this, for me, is perfect. It's exactly the colour that I'm looking for. So I do play about with this for a little while. I add it in different places. I add water to it. And then I come back and drop some more on because I want to try and keep just some of those little green bits in it as well. So again, I'll leave you for just a moment or two while I work on this. So loving the way that this is looking, but what I wanted to do now was just to add in some darker points. I swithered about using black, but in the end decided on this burnt umber in a fluid acrylic. And basically where I put it is around the inside of the circle, around the outside of the circle, and then just around the outer edges of the kind of rock that the dragonfly is in. And I think, I, I can't remember, mm, no, I don't put any dabs in the dragonfly itself. So again, I'll leave you for just a moment or two while I do this. I don't leave the entire thing in, but I'll let you see that and then we'll be looking at the finished piece.
So I am absolutely loving the way that this has turned out. Lots of layers, you know, the original gel print showing through a bit from the bottom, the texture paste, the way the dragonfly has has turned out is, in my mind, gorgeous. Loving the effect of the ring of collage and uh, you know, all those, all that texture that's in there. So both the pattern creating texture, but also the products that I've used creating texture. So I do hope that you've enjoyed this project. You know, you don't have to have all the supplies I used to create it. Instead of the texture gel, you could use a texture paste, or you could simply use something like a gesso or an acrylic paint. Now I did do a little test to see, I couldn't remember if the powders were permanent or not, I just tried it down in this here, they're not. I think what I want to do is to seal this. I did say something about sealing wax pastels recently and somebody asked me what I would do it with. If you don't have sealant you could use something like a hairspray. I will use, once this is fully dry, I will use a spray sealant on it. You can just see where the light is just hitting some of the gold that's coming through the colour art powders and it, it, it really is gorgeous. So I'm very pleased with the way this worked out. So if you want to see how I created all those little collage papers, then I will leave a link to the Make Your Mark series that I created and it also shows you other projects that I used it in. So thanks ever so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye for now.